since the earliest times, man has been casting his eyes heavenwards, enviously regarding the graceful antics of the birds and puzzling how he could copy their tireless journeyings through the air. The first record of any aerial attempt by man is found in the early Greek writings where we discover the classical story of Deedless and Icarus. Here is our idea of Icarus in their island dungeon. Father Deedless is making two pairs of wings of wax and feathers and son Icarus is threatening to break the altitude record next day. Now they are off. Icarus flying strongly takes the lead. This mythical flight occurred BC sometime. Icarus seems to have a nasty tail wobble. He has beaten the altitude record all right, but his wax wings have melted. And he is now executing the world's first spinning nosedive. We now jump to 1490, when Leonardo da Vinci made his first theoretical discoveries about aeronautics. This is his invention. And here is the manner in which he dreamed he might one day use it. His girlfriend seems to be rather worried about him. In 1670, Francis Lana designed this lighter-than-air apparatus, which, had it ever flown, would have been a fine gratuitous advertisement for the pawnbroking industry of those days. Now to 1800, when Sir George Cayley designed this model. Here are two photographs of his followers in research, Henson with side whiskers and Stringfellow without. These two inventors devised and patented an aerial steamship carriage. We have made one of these machines to their drawing, which is more than they ever succeeded in doing. We are now going to fly this for you in the presence of a typical audience of the year 1842. If our machine had ever flown over London as it then was, here are the reactions of a beer drinker who suddenly sees an aeroplane in the sky. He looks anxiously into his mug, presumably suspecting the local beer. Other people, however, can see it as well, including the local agent for Negretti and Zambra, who is loaning his telescope at a penny a peep. Our flight of fancy has carried us miles, and we see Henson as he imagined he would fly over Cairo. Although he never flew, Stringfellow stayed the course for another six years and finally produced the first self-propelled model aeroplane to take the air. This model aeroplane was driven by steam and running down a taut wire was released by a stop after which it actually rose. This was the first machine to fly under its own power. And so to the year 1883. Here is Otto Lilienthal, the first and perhaps the greatest of all pilots and we see him experiencing the thrill that every human being had longed for for centuries. He is actually controlling a homemade glider of his own design and soaring in the upward currents of air diverted by the rolling contours of the southern hills of Germany. Now we have a view of the world's first glider pilot after a successful landing. In 1903, two great glider pilots, Orville and Wilbur Wright, fitted their glider with a petrol engine and were the first men to fly in a power-driven aeroplane. This is the actual film of one of their early flights. Both flying and cinematography have obviously improved since then. 
Wright is now breaking the world's altitude record by flying over captive balloons at a height of 100 feet. We shall next see him making the first passenger flight, and I think we also take our hats off to the passenger. As this is obviously the birth of commercial aviation, we wonder whether the passenger paid for or was paid to take his seat. This is a later Wright model. Orville Wright can be seen with his coat off, obviously ready to put his shirt on the machine. Here she is starting up, not such a slow process in those days as many of us may have imagined. Will she leave the rail or won't she? Apparently somebody seems to be in doubt. But after all, Wright sails gracefully into the air. The first official flying meeting in France. This is an authentic early film showing President Fallier being greeted by Mr. Milleron. General French is on the left. Here is Mr. Latham's machine being towed out for the display. This is the famous Latham himself, taking his seat amidst a mass of wheels and gadgets. One of them has apparently been tied up with string. We hope the rest of the machinery is not held together in the same way. He is now in the air, oblivious of all mechanical difficulties through his masterly skill as a pilot. The famous Farman box kite now makes its debut before the distinguished audience. We thus see how after centuries of abortive struggle the first practicable aeroplanes were evolved. From now onwards the progress of aviation is becoming incredibly swift.